Presenteeism, working while sick. From the local grocery store to the corporate offices of Fortune 500 companies, some workers are there without really being there. They come to work ill, injured, or otherwise physically or mentally unwell. They feel obligated to show up and put their best faces forward. This phenomenon is called presenteeism. Perhaps you know a co-worker who has engaged in presenteeism. Maybe they were feeling under the weather or experiencing a stressful personal situation. Still, they felt obligated or maybe were even pressured into showing up for work. There is a mistaken belief that dedicated employees put everything else on the back burner to prioritize their jobs. The reality is, when you engage in presenteeism, you are less likely to perform your duties well and could even make costly mistakes. Depending on your job, those mistakes could jeopardize the health and well-being of others. What causes presenteeism? Presenteeism can happen in virtually any workplace, even though it rarely is openly discussed. Unlike absenteeism, presenteeism is more difficult to detect. You may be showing up and muddling through your job while dealing with physical or psychological conditions that can impair your performance and judgment. When you do not show up for your shift at work, it is noticeable. Detecting the level at which a hidden illness or condition affects your job performance is not as simple. Coming to work in a diminished capacity not only makes performing tasks more difficult, it also creates serious problems, including safety issues for co-workers and lost productivity. Absenteeism versus presenteeism. Absenteeism and presenteeism are not the same things. Absenteeism is when you frequently call off the job. It could be due to an illness, chronic injury, or even family commitments. Regardless of the reason, absent workers are gone more than they are present, and everyone notices. Human resources professionals have debated for years which is worse, workers who constantly call off or those who show up but are unable to adequately or safely perform their duties. Both cause decreased productivity, poor customer experiences, low morale, cost their employer money, and place a burden on remaining staff members. Why do employees engage in presenteeism? Why do you feel compelled to engage in acts of presenteeism? There are several common reasons. 1. You are saving up your time off. Dual-income households, especially those with small children or older family members needing care, may find they need to save up their time off to cover everyone else's illnesses and emergencies but their own. 2. You fear consequences. Sometimes you may fear you will be viewed as less committed than your co-workers if you take time off for any reason. You may fear being passed over for career advancement. Even at jobs that offer paid time off, some supervisors discourage employees from using it. The notion that loyalty to the company requires 100% presence often is pushed. In these kinds of employment environments, you may have concerns over disciplinary action that could include losing your job. 3. You have a heavy workload. You consider yourself a responsible working adult. So, it can be difficult for you to take time off, even when you are sick, if you know your co-workers will be overburdened covering for you. 
While understaffing is not your fault, you may feel guilty for taking a day off, knowing it will leave your co-workers even more short-handed than usual. Even worse is knowing your work will not be covered by someone in your absence, which may cause you to miss important deadlines upon your return. 4. You have little or no paid sick days. Some workplace cultures do not promote health and wellness. Certain industries, including retail and fast food, may not provide adequate benefits for employees, including paid time off. Your employer might require a note from a doctor to use your sick days or receive paid or unpaid time off without penalty. That creates a barrier for workers who lack adequate health care coverage and must then pay for a doctor's visit out of pocket. In these situations, you may feel compelled to report for duty to avoid losing pay or your position. A study published by the Journal of Occupational Health Psychology supported these and other reasons for the growing trend of presenteeism in the workforce. What occupations are more prone to presenteeism? Occupations that require a high level of human interaction were more prone to presenteeism than others. A Swedish study determined the highest level of presenteeism involved care and welfare workers as well as educators. Do you work in a profession with a more physical workload or that requires shift work? If you work in a job like nursing or manufacturing or factory jobs, you are at higher risk of engaging in presenteeism. The Price of Presenteeism Just because your body is present at work does not mean you are being productive. This is the theory behind numerous studies into the impact of presenteeism on the bottom line. While it is more difficult to quantify lost productivity from presenteeism than from absenteeism, some solid findings reveal the hidden costs of presenteeism on the workforce. A report in the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, broke down productivity losses based on presenteeism reasons. $35 billion annually due to depression, $47 billion annually due to chronic health conditions. Data from the Integrated Benefits Institute, IBI, indicates that 39% of productivity is lost due to presenteeism. The same IBI report revealed that presenteeism caused by poor health is accountable for an estimated $576 billion in costs to the U.S. economy. What are the implications for presenteeism and working remotely? Presenteeism in the workforce is further complicated by the growing number of people now working remotely. Some argue in favor of remote work as the cure for presenteeism by allowing workers to perform their duties from the comfort of their homes. Others insist presenteeism in the physical workplace will simply morph into what they are dubbing e-presenteeism. Working remotely can add pressure for workers to feel like they are always on. Remote employees working at home do not escape presenteeism. A Canada Life survey showed that 46% of remote workers said they feel more pressure to be present while working virtually. A separate study by the United Kingdom advocacy group Mental Health Foundation determined that the lack of work-life balance in remote working positions actually leads to higher rates of e-presenteeism. If you are among the 41% of the U.S. and Canadian workforce working remotely, you may be at a higher risk of this form of working unwell.
What should an employee prone to presenteeism do? If you are prone to presenteeism, you need to identify the underlying cause. Is it a physical or mental condition that is making it more difficult for you to do your work? Your employee assistance program can help. Once the issue is pinpointed, speaking with a physician or mental health counselor is the first step. Talking with your supervisor at work to establish an action plan for addressing your needs is recommended. Your EAP can also help you structure this conversation, how to approach your boss. Don't forget documentation from healthcare practitioners to support your requests. Becoming more present. Presenteeism is a growing problem. Regaining control requires individual responsibility in addition to greater recognition from employers. Unlike absenteeism, presenteeism has several quick fixes that can get things back on track. Some of these may be important to discuss between you and your boss. Flexible work arrangements. Flexible work arrangements encourage work-life balance because they give you latitude on how, when, and where you work. Whole-of-person approaches Whole-of-person approaches to health and wellness prioritize mental and physical well-being, which naturally leads to greater productivity. Changing the Culture Changing the culture involves starting at the top. This means management modeling behaviors that promote work-life balance, so employees in the rank and file are encouraged to do the same. With these and other small changes, you will not feel obligated to press on when you are physically or mentally unable to do so, and employers will not suffer losses in productivity. It is a win-win situation for all. Thank you for participating in this program.